Now, a group of top international violinists from 29 countries have collaborated on a video performance to raise money for the plight of Ukrainians. Now, let's just take a listen to this. I spoke to uh, some of the violinists that you saw there. Ilya Bondarenko is in Ukraine and uh, he started to play at the very beginning of that video performance. And also Karenza Peacock, who told me how the war inspired her to create the project. On the day that Putin invaded Ukraine, I was going about my normal day as a violinist. I was about to practice scales and then run a few errands. And I just thought, had such a horrific situation. I wondered what my fellow violinists were doing in the Ukraine. So I randomly befriended some on Instagram um, and ended up talking to a whole bunch of violinists there who said they were also practicing their scales, but then going to work out how to arm themselves. And um, I just thought it was such a horrific situation. And then I ended up getting in touch with Ilya, who was sheltering in his basement. And that's how this whole idea came about. I've got a daughter that practiced piano scales. They're not the best of fun, are they? So you might as well put them to use. <laughs> um, Ilya, I wonder if I, could, if I could come to you. What, what did you think when Carenza reached out to you? I was really impressed because uh, I didn't expect that Carenza will ever see the video on my Instagram with my string quartet and will answer me and will ask me about my safe, my health, and am I, am, is everything okay with me? And I was really surprised and impressed, and I'm really grateful for her that she offered me that idea to make that video, that project. It's impressive and wonderful. Um, of course, uh, there has been a particular musical video that has gone uh, viral, and that was uh, Vera uh, Litachenko, who was uh, playing to lift the spirits of those in bomb shelters in, in Ukraine. Have either of you reached out to her or, or heard from her? Uh, no, actually, because I think we were already had collected our videos for this when that came into the news. So unfortunately, I hadn't um, heard about her or got her contact details, but I'd love for her to join with us on something. Oh, well, maybe we can arrange it. Um, how much money has been uh, raised so far? Uh, I don't know if it's uh, Carenza or Ilya, who's got that figure for us, Carenza? Well, we've actually been sharing the links to a lot of different charities, but on our YouTube video, we're donating to the UN Refugee Agency. And I think uh, we only put the donate button on there. And I think we already have a few thousand dollars. Um, so, yeah. But we're encouraging to people to give where they can and to the International Rescue Committee as well. Obviously, Ilya, you're, you're in Ukraine. Um, how have you managed to take part yeah. in this, this virtual concert? Uh, logistically, was it quite challenging? It was, uh, it was really hard because I, I directly in that moment I was underground because uh, in those moments there was bomb in time. And uh, I was only with my grandmother, grandmother and I asked her to make video uh, when I playing and just it was a few minutes because uh, when we uh, live in upstairs now in the Kiev, uh, we trying to not make so much uh, sounds because every sound we are trying to hear the siren or something mm -hmm. like that it's, and run underground, you know. Ilya, music is very powerful. What has it done to those who have been listening to you play in Ukraine, those around you? What, what sort of things have they been saying to you? I think um, music can inspire and uh, Ukrainian music and Ukrainian musicians now understanding that uh, they are soldiers now on their own field and music can inspire people 
we cannot uh, be being with weapon on the battlefield now, but we have our own weapons, our instruments, our music, and I think uh, all musicians in Ukraine and uh, in other countries trying to help Ukraine with uh, themselves to make charity concerts, make uh, videos like that one and to compose music about that all situation. I think it's great power, mm. great power. And I think in that case, Ukraine already won, you know, because uh, in these few weeks, just weeks and few days, uh, Ukraine got so much support from different, uh, uh, different people, different types of work from different types of jobs. And it's incredible. And I think Ukraine already won in that case. There are some big names involved here, not just in terms of, uh, yes, they are uh, the symphonies. You've got the Oslo Philharmonic, you've got the London uh, Symphony Orchestra, Tokyo Symphony, but also, um, characters as well just tell us very quickly who's taken part in this well i was so impressed because some of the top violinists in the world literally dropped everything they were doing to make these videos so we have um concert masters and soloists like cleo gould in the uk uh we have mark o'connor who's the most famous american fiddle player um at the, at so many people that have joined us people that are from the punch brothers gabe Whit which are fiddle players and classical players and the best chamber musicians from around the world have all, they literally dropped everything they were doing to make a video, so I was very impressed. OK, I think we're going to uh, listen to some of your music now, and I wonder, Ilya, if you could start for us. Just tell us very quickly uh, the piece you're going to play, and uh, the floor is yours. I'm going to play this piece. It's folk, uh, Ukrainian song, Verbova Dushechka, and I, I cannot imagine how it how I can translate to you, but it's uh, within song, and uh, I'm going to play okay. it right now with Ukraine. Thank you. Beautiful was that? Tears in my eyes. Um, those were the uh, musicians um, who are taking part in a virtual uh, concert. Um, that was Ilya uh, Bondarenko and also Karenza Peacock. We're going to end uh, this particular segment here on BBC News by just taking you live to Kiev, and this is Independence Square.